Well, now that we've built our arithmetic and logic unit, our ALU, and we've, we've got it working, so we can add and subtract. So right now it's got, uh, this is six minus two is equal to four, and we can uh, also add. So six plus two is equal to eight. So we can add and subtract. Uh, now what we can do is hook it up to our bus uh, so that we can take the output of, of the arithmetic and you know, feed it in in some other way. So what I'm gonna do is, uh, I guess first disconnect my bus from any kind of external input here. And then uh, I'm gonna actually just disconnect the instruction register here. We're not using that right now. Um, so rather than just adding more mess to this, I'll just disconnect it and use these same wires. And so being careful to uh, keep this stuff in order, I'll hook up all eight bits here. And so now our bus is connected uh, to the ALU. And of course, this is only used for output from the ALU to the bus, right? Because the ALU gets its inputs from the registers. So the inputs to the ALU, you have to load them into either the A register or the B register, or actually both the A register and the B register, and then it will either add or subtract them, and then just the output goes out to the bus here. So we can use this, um, this uh, ALU output, or EO, signal. If we take that low, then whatever's in the ALU, in this case it's uh, um, uh, an eight, goes out on the bus. Now, what we can do then is read from the bus into the A register. And what's kind of interesting here, I'm gonna stop the clock. And I'm gonna, uh, so with the clock not running, if I enable the A register to read from the bus, nothing happens, right? Because it's not until the clock goes, goes high that we'll read from the bus. But something interesting is gonna happen here, which is, which is really important to, to understand the, the, the nuance here, because remember the A register, or any of these registers, is gonna read on the rising edge of the clock. And that's really important here, because on the rising edge of the clock, the value on the bus is an eight. So it's gonna read that eight on the rising edge of the bus into the A register. But as soon as that shows up in the A register, then this value, this eight, that's going out on the bus, is gonna change because instead of uh, taking uh, six plus two to get eight, it's gonna be eight plus two, and this will turn into a 10. So as soon as it reads this eight, you know, immediately the ALU is gonna, is gonna keep trying to add these two, and it's gonna give us a 10 here, and the ALU is outputting to the bus, so there's gonna be a 10 on the bus, so then you would think that the A register is gonna read it in again. Um, but because we have the clock, and this is the importance of having that clock in there, it's only gonna read you know, just that instant when the, at the rising edge of the clock. So when I push this clock, you see just at the rising edge, it just reads in the eight, um, and it doesn't then continue to read in the 10, even though this changed almost instantaneously. And I think that's the, that the key is that it's almost instantaneous. Uh, so it's able to read in that eight. And then the next clock, it's gonna read in the 10. And now there's a 12 on the bus. And next clock, it reads in the 12. The next clock, and now we have a 14 on the bus. The next clock, it'll read in that 14. And now we have a 16 on the bus. And as you can see, each time the clock goes, it's adding two. And that makes sense because we have a two in, uh, down here in the B register. And so every time we put a new value into the A register, we're adding two to it and putting that into the ALU. And then that's being output on the bus. And so then the next clock, we bring that into the A register. So if we just let the clock run, you see at every clock's pulse, the A register increments by two, or we add two to it, because we have a two down here in the B register. And so you can see it's just counting. And we can speed the clock up if we wanna go faster. That's a little bit too fast to see, <laughs> but there we go. And so you can see it's actually just counting by twos with each clock pulse. Of course, in addition to adding, we can also subtract. We can set our uh, add and subtract bit to subtract. And now it's actually subtracting two each time. Zero, and then it wraps around, and it subtracts two each time. And so I think that pretty much does it for our ALU. So we've got our A register, and we have our A out and A in signals that we can bring high or low to, to turn on the A in or A out signal to read or write from the A bus. We also have a clear signal here if we want to just clear it. Uh, and then we have our B register with the 
B out and B in signals that we can set, and then of course a way to clear the B register. And then we have our ALU, which has an out uh, signal, which outputs the contents to the bus. And then we also have this add or subtract bit, which we can add or subtract. Uh, and so that pretty much does it. We've got our, our two registers and we've got our ALU. So we can do we can put, put some values in here and do some math. Uh, I think in the, in the next set of videos, I'll uh, focus on memory because uh, we, we want to be able to have uh, some, some memory that can store different values so we can read those in as well. Uh, and then in future videos, we'll talk about the control logic, which actually will automatically control all of these different signals that I've been uh, doing manually.